Hello, my name is Samira Mather, and I'm a board-certified orthopedic spine surgeon. I currently practice at Cary Orthopedics, and I've been practicing here uh, since 2009. Prior uh, to Cary Orthopedics, I was an assistant professor at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Uh, my specialty is minimally invasive uh, spine surgery. Today I'm going to discuss uh, one of the most common surgical procedures that we do, which is called a laminectomy. Uh, the most common reason to do a laminectomy is called spinal stenosis. Uh, spinal stenosis means that there's narrowing of the canal. And one of the most common symptoms of spinal stenosis is difficulty with walking. Most patients with spinal stenosis have back pain, buttock pain, and pain that radiates into their lower extremity. What separates spinal stenosis from a disc herniation is that people with spinal stenosis have a difficult time standing and a difficult time walking. The more they stand or the more they walk, they get heaviness and weakness in their legs and increasing pain in their back. When they sit down, they get relief of these symptoms as well as when they lean forward. So one of the most common signs that we see is what we call a shopping cart sign, which is patients have a hard time walking, but when they go to the grocery store and they lean on a shopping cart, which naturally brings you to a forward posture, they're able to walk a lot further with a lot of less pain. Um, this condition of spinal stenosis is treated surgically with what we call a lumbar, which is your lower back laminectomy. So in this video, I'm going to discuss what exactly is spinal stenosis and how we treat this from a surgical perspective. I'm going to discuss exactly what is spinal stenosis with this animated slides. If you look at the entirety of the spine, these vertebrae look like the cervical spine, these vertebrae are in the thoracic spine, and this vertebrae is a lumbar spine. The most common area to get spinal stenosis is the lumbar spine. What happens in stenosis is that there's narrowing of this tunnel where the spinal cord and the spinal nerves run through. So you can see here, this is what the lower back and the nerve look like as they're running through this tunnel, which we call the spinal canal. These dots are the individual nerves that eventually leave the spine through these tunnels, which we call foramina, to go into the legs. When you're looking at the vertebrae, spinal stenosis results in bony overgrowth of the tunnel where the nerves leave through, which are called a foramina, which can then put compression on these nerves. And these are the nerves that are now turning red after the compression. And this can result from excess bone growth. And you can see that the excess bone growth not only occurs in the tunnels where the nerves leave through, but also centrally where the fecal sac is here. And you can see that there's excess bone growth here, limiting the space for this fecal sac to travel down the spinal canal. I'm now going to discuss the surgical procedure of how we treat spinal stenosis. And this is called a laminectomy. And I'm particularly going to focus on the laminectomy being done in the lower part of the back, which is the lumbar spine, which is the most common area where we do a laminectomy. So this is an animated version of what the spine looks like. This right here are the bony promises called the spinous processes that if you touch your back, you can feel the tips of these bones. This area here is called the lamina, and right underneath the lamina are the spinal nerves and the fecal sac. In a normal spine, you can see that these are the nerves that are running down and there's a lot of room uh, between the bones here and here for the nerves to travel through. Spinal stenosis occurs when you get overgrowth of the bone. So here you can see that the bone here is growing osteophytes, what we commonly call bone spurs, and you can see now they're impinging or encroaching on the nerves and there's not enough room for these nerves to travel through the spine without having compression. This is what leads to the symptoms of spinal stenosis, which is back pain, leg pain, pain in the leg and weakness worse with standing and walking. And now I'm going to go through how we do the surgical technique of a laminectomy. Under x-ray, we identify the levels where there are significant bone spurs and compression of the nerves. Frequently, this involves multiple levels. We then mark the skin where these bones and the compression is, and it's usually a vertical incision spanning the levels that are causing compression. We then remove these bones called the spinous processes. After removing the spinous processes, which again we may have to do at multiple levels, we then remove the lamina, which are these bones here. And these lamina are where the bone spurs are occurring from. As you can see, after we remove the lamina, the central part of the canal is significantly improved. The next focus is opening the tunnels where the nerve leaves through. 
and there's bone spurs here as well. And we open up this area by removing these bone spurs. So we've opened up the canal centrally and now in the foramen. So after we've opened up the midline of the spine as well as the foramen, the procedure is completed. Uh, we apply a dressing and then you're taken to recovery room. Uh, depending on how many levels we do, this is an outpatient procedure that we normally do at the surgery center. Uh, we see you back in about 10 days uh, after you leave the hospital and then we gradually return you uh, back to your activities of daily living. The goal of this surgery is to help walk to help you walk better. Um, you know, most of the people aren't able to walk before and after surgery, they have a significant improvement in their ability to walk long distances. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm a registered nurse here at Care Orthopedic Spine Specialist. I'm with Dr. Mather. I'm one of his nurses here. And next time you come in to see us for your last appointment prior to surgery, I'll be speaking with you about your spinal procedure. In the following slides, you will learn about spine surgery education the risks, recovery, and frequently asked questions. First off, we have the general risks of spine surgery. These risks are quoted with our own office with Dr. Mather, usually less than a 1% chance. Um, we have infection, bleeding, paralysis, blood clots, persistent pain, dural tear, and anesthesia complications. A dural tear is a nick in a spinal cord sac that the spinal cord lives in, almost like a water balloon. If that is punctured in surgery, typically we can see that happen. Um, fluid leaks out, cerebral spinal fluid, and it is then given a patch during the surgery. Um, that would keep you overnight. We would monitor you and watch it the next day. That is actually the highest risk on this list. Um, again, it is probably less than a one to 2% chance within our office here with Dr. Mather, um, giving them all a low percentage rate. So we have some questions that are very standard here. Um, anytime we have people come in for spine surgery, we put the top 10 together. So here is that list. When can I drive? Uh, we definitely prefer you don't drive until after your first post-operative appointment. That's usually because of pain medications, possible weakness uh, before surgery that lingers after surgery, and just your strength in general. Position for sleeping is always on your back or your side. Um, if it's a cervical surgery, a neck surgery, we want you on your back or your side still, but then we also want you elevated. That will help reduce the swelling. Some people do actually require a brace for surgery. It's going to depend on the surgery itself and um, the mechanism of your surgery. Will I be in pain after surgery? Yes, you will be in pain after surgery. Typically at the incision site is most common. Sometimes residual pain from um, your prior symptoms are still present as well. We hope that there is some relief immediately, but that's not always the case. Returning to work is very different for everybody. It's gonna depend on which exact surgery you're having and then also the job requirements pertaining to it. Do I need supplies for my incision? Yes, you will need supplies. So most commonly you're gonna need gauze and tape. Each incision is just covered with gauze and tape when you leave the hospital and you actually won't change that incision until your first shower, and which is the next question, which is standardly about three days. Um, if you would look at that on the slide, it says you may also use Tegaderm with gauze. Tegaderm is a fancy type of tape that um, a lot of doctors use. We like to use it as well. It's a great use of tape. It can be expensive, so if you can find it at a reasonable price, it is worth getting. Also, island dressings. Island dressings are great as well because it comes with the gauze already attached. It looks like a big white band-aid. We talked about the showering. We do prefer three days. Um, some cases you'll have to wait five days, but we would talk specifically with you at your appointment about that. You do need to change your dressing, but only at shower day. So um, at day three, you will take a shower, take your bandage off first, take your first shower, and then put a clean dressing on after that with your supplies that you had bought previously. When can I be intimate with my partner? Uh, generally, we suggest about six weeks. Will I need physical therapy? In most cases, yes. Again, this is one of those questions that is just going to be pertinent to your specific surgery and recovery. All right, lumbar decompression, also known as a laminectomy disectomy. These specific risks for the laminectomy disectomy surgery include adjacent segment degeneration, instability to the spine, and recurrent disc herniation. Your biggest risk for recurrent disc herniation, which is a lot of people's fear, is within that first six weeks um, post-operative period. We also have seen that at the one-year mark. 
it's not common, but we see it within the first six weeks um, and again at the one year mark. Top highlights of the post-operative care and recovery for the lumbar decompression laminectomy disectomy surgery. This is not a bed rest procedure. We encourage walking and frequent position changes. Sleep at nighttime and then be up during the daytime. You may return to your normal diet as tolerated as long as you're not sick with anesthesia. Please feel free to eat as needed and as desired. You may have a back brace for this procedure. Not everyone requires one. It's going to depend on your specifics of the surgery and how many levels it's going to be. If you do receive a back brace for this procedure, we will talk about it individually at your appointment. You may use ice to help with pain. No heat, please. Most commonly pain will occur right at that low back at the incision site. You do not need to change your dressing until you take your first shower, which is three days after. So when you go home from the hospital, leave that dressing on, the same one that you left with, until shower day, three days later. Take the dressing off, take your shower, and then put a clean one back on. Please do not use any lotions, oils, creams, or medications on your incision for at least six weeks. No lifting greater than 20 pounds. That also means no pushing or pulling. So be careful, we always advise you with grocery carts. Um, and dog walking, very important for this procedure. You cannot walk anything greater than 20 pounds either. It's just a risk with the pooling mechanism. Returning to work is dependent upon your job requirements. Some patients may return to work after their first post-operative appointment. Uh, maybe if they have a desk job, it's certainly easier to get you back to that or if you work from home. While others will need a few weeks out of work, we will discuss this individually. Please notify us if you have fever, drainage at incision site, headaches, or new symptoms that were not present prior to surgery. Preparing for surgery. Dr. Mather and or his highly trained staff is always available to assist with your questions or concerns. You can find that information on the website on how to contact us. You will have one last appointment prior to surgery. This is an appointment devoted to educating you with Dr. Mather and his nursing staff. We will provide further information about your specific surgery and recovery. This is the perfect appointment to bring your questions and your caregiver to you. Surgery can be intimidating, so please let us know if we can assist you in any way on making this a smoother process. And for further information, please visit www.matherspinesurgery.com and then follow the links below.